So, it's been pretty wet out lately, and I think we can find some neat stuff. Let's get to looking. Okay, this is a bit shallow. There's nothing here. Uh, let's try the road. As stated at the top, this video is a two-parter. I made it as one piece initially, but it was too long. So you'll want to be sure to tune back in for part two. We're in Bali. Island of New Zealand. You can see out that direction by the island. Yeah, I reckon the middle's better. Jeez. Here we got. You bit my face. Just a little kid watching the Discovery Channel. What a beauty. So we've got a couple of finds tonight so far. See here, dead cane toad. This is what the fate of many reptiles and amphibians on the road is. But uh, at least this one's just a cane toad. They're invasive, so I mean, it's sad that everything die, but they're doing a lot of harm being alive, to be fair. Oh, and oops. this is a beetle that was on the road when we stopped. Eh, come here, beetle. And there's some frogs. Ah, the mess. Come here, beetle. You sit on my knee. So Okay, but here are two interesting little frogs. Look at those colors. So most of what I wind up seeing are way bigger frogs, but these are some neat looking little ones. They never hop on cue. Boink. <laughs> oh, there's one eating. Get that. You can't see it too clearly here, but watch when he swallows. You'll see him close his eyes, and they use that to help push the food down the throat as their eyes recess into the inside of their head. It's a pretty neat little thing frogs do. <laughs> Where's the other one? There's so much variety. These are all the same thing. Let's get them all together. Where'd that rhino beetle go? No. There he is. Okay. Check this out. <laughs> That's a fair amount of variety. everywhere. Okay. So here we've got the first snake of the night. This guy's a carpet python. Pretty much your standard, you know, Aussie python. Just the quintessential python you always, at least I think of when I think of Australia. It's like the baseline python. At any rate, they're pretty cool. When you get them on the right moment, they're pretty goey and fun. This guy's bitten me a few times, but only kind of when I startle him by his head or whatever. He's not in a very goey attitude. And he's a bit cold for all of that anyway. And this guy's not very big. They get much bigger than this. And the patterns are also highly variable. This guy's got kind of the, I don't know, I kind of think of it as a little more checkered where all the scales almost stand out more and have that repeating pattern. Whereas some have more oscillations of different things. They're a highly variable snake, really cool and not the most common thing on this road. So, still a bit of a treat, even though they're a pretty common snake. And you can see right here on his face, he's got these little lines right there. I'll have to get a close up separately and I'll just cut it in for you guys to see. But anyway, that's his uh, little heat seeking or sensing pits. And that's wired in on his brain in his visual center. So he kind of has like a heat map of what he's looking at, which really helps him when he wants to go hunt mammalian prey. Their heat signature will just make them stand out like a sore thumb compared to the background. Pretty neat little trick they got up their sleeve. Right, nice snakes. And they usually chill out pretty good like this, even if it's a pretty bitey one. Yeah, they work out that you're not trying to hurt them. It's not worth the effort. And they just kind of hang out. So fun and pretty standard first snake of the night. Wonder what we'll find next. There you go, buddy. 
Now don't come back and get yourself hit by any cars now. Be a good boy. Stay off the road. I just got this guy off the road. I drove by and I wasn't sure what I was looking at. I thought that kind of looks like something, but it's probably just a leaf. But I turned around and I saw this little kind of skinny, shiny thing that they had legs. And I was like, well, it's not a salamander. It was wet too, it's wet out. Um, Cause those aren't around here. At any rate, it turned out to be a Tenotis with a little bit of relatively fresh, but not too fresh tail damage. So him chucked off the road. He was bitey earlier. Come on. And he's an ornery little sucker. Not very grateful that we're saving him. We're gonna get him off the road anyway. Come on, buddy. You'll have to forgive the, uh, the fogging. The video quality is probably going to crap, but that is because of how humid it is. Okay. Well, it's one animal released. And for our second snake of the night, we've got a stunner of a little black-headed python right here. When they're little, their colors are typically better, so I don't know how much really better overall this guy is. But typically, you have a pretty dark coloration on their main body with an already dark head over where we are here. But further west, you'll get them with a really light body and a striking dark head. And this guy has that better comparison of light to dark, but he may lose that as he ages. But what's truly special on this guy is this just awesome orange along the side of him. I was just impressed just how much that pops and how much he has. A striking little black headed python. And I think a pretty cool find is I don't see too many of them out here to begin with. One thing kind of notable about this species is these guys and the Woma both don't have heat sensing pits on their face like you know, basically all the other pythons do. And that's because they tend to be reptile eaters. These guys in particular love to eat other snakes. I mean, they'll obviously also take mammals and other reptiles like lizards and stuff, but they feed enough on reptiles that they don't need the heat seeking pits and love snakes in particular. But they're just pretty cool animals. And this guy's pretty chill. It's kind of 50 50. Some of them are really chill, uh, others really want to, you know, take some of you with them. This guy's a good boy, and I think he's just really happy to be absorbing the warmth off of my skin on this cool, rainy night. Beautiful animal, and always a pleasure to find. <laughs> well, I guess we'll get him back into his natural habitat, and off on his way, and it's on to the next thing. And this wallaby right here is what we like to call fucked up. Any rate, as sad as it can be, it's always good to stop and take a look and see if there's something inside the pouch. If there's a baby, you can rescue it and take it to a carer. And in general, you should just get the whole corpse off the road so other things don't die attempting to eat it. Ugh. That is tore up. It's like in that pouch, but a lot of room in there. And actually nothing. Okay, nothing to rescue, but still got to get it off the road. And then uh, I'm going to clean my hands off because we don't want to start COVID 2021. So the technique we're using tonight to look for stuff is commonly referred to as snake cruising. But snakes are actually almost the minority of what you find, especially on a wet day. This guy under here represents more the norm. It's a frog, but not a cane toad. So that's a win. Been seeing more of these guys than cane toads lately. And I call that pretty good. Come on, hop away, make my point. He's ruining the shot. You were hopping like crazy earlier. Just go on. Whatever. We're going to get him off the road and move on and find some other stuff. Oh, there you did it. Ah. 
All right, let's go. <laughs> Here's the next snake. He's just twirling. This is a brown tree snake. It's a mildly venomous colubrid. Rear fang, so they really got to chew to get a decent envenomation in it. Yeah, no, he took a swing. Um, actually probably have stronger venom than they're generally giving credit for. But again, they have to chew to get a decent envenomation in and bigger individuals can deliver more. But they have this bad habit of they'll crawl around on you and act kind of like a normal snake and then suddenly just bite you, just kind of roll their mouth around you. And it's just weird. So I try not to let them crawl on me too much anymore, but even if they do bite you, it generally doesn't do much unless you're allergic. But they're a pretty neat, cool um, snake. They're one of the cat snakes. And they kind of have a decent pattern on some of them and a nice orange color. This one's a bit duller than a lot of the other local ones. And they're arboreal, so they're really good at coming up over their own body and supporting their weight. Uh, he probably just wants to go get back off and go look for food that's out in this cool weather. But he's got a decent amount of uh, liveliness to him for how wet and kind of chilly it is right now. And I'm just hoping the audio's okay over the sound of the engine still running and the wipers going. Well, let's pop him up on off the road where he's safe. Come on, buddy, let's go. Now he opened his mouth at my face. <laughs> oh, there you go, buddy. And cut, and let's. So sadly, nowadays, this is the majority of what you're going to find when you go out looking got herpin at night, so looking for reptiles and amphibians. So it's wet, so we decided to go out road cruising. But uh, yeah, this is a cane toad. And because they have really strong poison in their poison glands here, and they're not native, things don't know how to deal with them, and therefore nothing can eat them, and their populations just swell and go nuts. And they do a lot of damage to native wildlife by killing them. But eventually a lot of native wildlife gets used to not eating them and the populations start to recover. But you're still stuck in a spot where almost nothing can actually eat the toad itself. So their numbers wind up skyrocketing to ridiculous amounts. And while they take up a lot of biomass that could be taken up by other native cool animals, not that these guys can't be kind of cool in their own right, it's just a shame what they're doing to the ecosystem around here. This guy, he's missing a foot. But he's getting along pretty well for having that missing foot. Here, check this out. I'll show you the poison. Let's get some good lighting going. See if you can get a decent close-up shot. Like really close, like right up in on the poison glands. And get it in focus. Ready? Okay. There's all that poison for you right there, and that's the stuff that'll get into the system of any animal that tries to eat them and kill them, or at least make them really suffer and be sick, so. So don't lick it. That'd be a bad choice. Obviously. What am I thinking? Okay, get off the road, King Toad. Yeah, the toads are lucky, because I don't kill them. A lot of other people will, but the way I see it, you're never going to take out enough to make a real difference unless you really go hard at it in a particular area. So, to kill them individually, I just feel like I'm causing needless suffering of an animal that doesn't know it's a problem without being able to make a meaningful difference in the grand scheme of things. But, to each their own. Well, let's move on to some stuff that's hopefully native. Okay. Now here, oh wow, this is actually a pretty interesting colored example. But this would be the second most common amphibian out here behind the cane toad. Now this is the white tree frog or more commonly known in Australia as the green tree frog. But back stateside or anywhere else that keeps them as a hop, as pets, you probably know them as the white tree frog. They're pretty cool. They're chunky little gluttons and a pretty big tree frog, though the white lip tree frog also lives around here and that's the biggest tree frog in the world. And it gets a fair amount bigger than these guys, but this one has this cool patterning on the side of them, which I've seen in other captive specimens and stuff, but I've never seen to this degree in the wild. So that's actually quite cool. Oh. <laughs> well, they're a pretty cool frog and a treat to see in the wild when you've seen them in captivity for as long as I have. And just little gluttons. Pretty common. 
called tree frogs, but they'll opportunistically kind of go food everywhere. And you see them on the road quite often when it's wet. And they can get just so fat and be just gluttons. This guy isn't the best example of fatness on them though. And they get about double this big. But this is like an average largish one. <laughs> now there's a terrible description of their size if I ever heard one. Anyway, cool little animals. I don't know if you can see his color there, the spots, but it's pretty cool. I'll have to actually probably get photos of this guy since I haven't seen a wild one with this coloration before. They got pretty good cling pads, you can see. Their climbing skills on my watch. <laughs> wow. On to the next thing. Oh, come on, do the hop. <laughs> I know your time is valuable and I appreciate you spending it with me. Thanks for watching and I genuinely hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Anyway, real talk right now, I actually really do need your help here at the beginning, so please smash that subscribe button, do all the things, tell some friends about it if you're willing. That would be awesome. You're absolute legends. Have a wonderful day.